a lot of you may have heard about uh, all of the uh, crowing from the right about the quote unquote new world order and um, how uh, Obama was going to have the UN come in and <coughs> excuse me uh, snatch up all the weapons and uh, suspend all of our rights and all this other crap you know that they promote against the uh, progressives or the left well let me submit this to you maybe there is actually uh, someone trying to foment a new world order but instead of it being the people on the left I'm gonna submit to you that it's the people on the right okay I'm going to submit that the white supremacist neo-nazis have gotten together across international borders in order to do just that i'm further going to submit that donald trump is an integral part of this trump has gone in and attacked hispanics blacks muslims okay he has uh, basically supported through his lack of denouncement of white supremacist groups. He claimed that he didn't know who the hell David Duke was. Okay, David Duke and his brother white supremacists have come out in major support of Donald Trump and going so far as to say now that they have one of their own in the White House, things are going to be different. Donald Trump has brought in Steve Bannon, who, with his own words, have said that he has given a platform to white supremacists, a.k.a. alternate right, but we all know that they're white supremacists. And now we come to find out that the one of his key guys has met with a white supremacist neo-Nazi group out of Europe who has, in black and white, ties to the Kremlin, to Vladimir Putin. Here's a clip from the Lawrence O'Donnell show that illustrates exactly what I'm talking about. There has been another historic first for the Trump transition team a meeting with the leader of an Austrian group that was founded by the Nazis. The leader of the Austrian far-right Freedom Party visited General Flynn a few weeks ago inside Trump Tower. The Freedom Party was founded in the 1950s by literal Nazis. Donald Trump is very comfortable with the global far-right. He's comfortable with Putin. Good for him. The voters spoke and he won fair and red square. Now... There's no question the Russians were messing around our election. And still, uh, no true acknowledgement from the incoming administration of Putin's role. It's very disturbing because the evidence is quite overwhelming. She put the Secretary of State up for sale. Favors and access were granted to those who wrote checks. Now, he's the one facing questions about access to him and his family. Donald Trump's sons launched a Texas nonprofit to sell access to their father on, get this, the day after the inauguration. The corrupt pay for play scheme. You know, if irony still has a meaning, that was it. Austria's Freedom Party was founded in the 1950s by Nazis. The New York Times reports that recently the leader of the Freedom Party was welcomed to Trump Tower, where he met with Michael Flynn, Donald Trump's choice for national security advisor. The Trump transition team has refused to comment in any way on that meeting. But the leader of the Freedom Party wrote in a Facebook post, internationally, the Freedom Party continues to gain in influence. Certainly seems to have some influence at Trump Tower. The Times reported that the Freedom Party has a cooperation agreement with Russia's ruling political party. That means Michael Flynn seems to be on a collision course with General Joseph Dunford, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who has a fixed term of office that will leave him in that role for at least the first year of the Trump administration. Here's what General Dunford said about Russia in Senate testimony. 
What would you consider the greatest threat to our national security? My assessment today, Senator, is that Russia presents the greatest threat to our national security. If you want to talk about a nation that, that could pose an existential threat to the United States, I'd have to point to Russia. And if you look at their behavior, it's nothing short of alarming. Today, the Obama administration announced new sanctions on Russian individuals and companies that it says are connected to Russia's incursions into Ukraine. Joining us now, David Frum, senior editor at The Atlantic. Joe Cincerone, the president of Plowshares Fund, a global security foundation, and Michael McFall, former U.S. ambassador to Russia and an MSNBC contributor. Ambassador McFall, uh, your reaction to this meeting at Trump Tower? Inappropriate. Of course, uh, what more is to be said? Uh, it's inappropriate in so many different levels, but the main level, of course, is that it is a, this right-wing party uh, uh, that is, has alliances with other parties like it throughout Europe. Uh, you remember the, the Communist International? I call it the illiberal international. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all have, as you just reported quite accurately, very close ties to President Putin. Um, whatever Mr. Flynn's uh, private ideological views when he was a, a, a civilian, an independent person, that's one thing. Uh, but now that he is representing the transition, he has to deal with governments and he has to start treating our allies and our friends around the world as if they are our allies and friends, including the government of Austria. Uh, Joe Strincioli, is there any explanation for this uh that you can think of and that Trump campaign has offered no explanation at all, just no comment at all. Uh, what could be the best case scenario for a meeting like this? That you want to hear all points of views, even really wacky neo-Nazi points of views. But that is very flimsy justification. Remember, this is not the leader of a governing party. This is the leader of an opposition party, as you say, a party that was founded by a Nazi, a former SS officer in 1956, a party that has just signed an agreement of cooperation with Russia. So get this, the head of an Austrian political party has signed an agreement with a foreign leader Russia to, to cooperate with them, to have regular meetings. We used to call these kinds of people during World War II Quislings, named after the Norwegian politician Quisling, who cooperated with the Nazis in the occupation of his own country. We are now seeing a new network of Quislings, these far-right parties who are allying with Putin, with Russia, in a common cause against their own governments. And now, the soon-to-be national security advisor, the president of the United States, has legitimized these people, has welcomed them into Trump Tower, the, the White House in waiting, and blessed them. And this has not gone unnoticed. The, the, the far right, the alt right, as we call them here, are, are crowing about this. They're talking about a new axis of nationalism that spans North America and Europe. This is a deeply troubling development. Look, now... For those of you who don't realize it, by this prick taking that meeting, and we don't know exactly what was discussed, but it can assume that there's some type of cooperation that's going to go on. We have effectively meddled in the internal affairs of Austria, okay? Just think about it. We just complained about the Russians meddling in our internal affairs. We just meddled in the internal affairs of Austria by meeting and dealing with this anti-government group based out of Austria. Listen to what Senator Chris Murphy said about this. This is an incredibly disturbing meeting, although it's not really surprising. Um, Flynn is a, a very dangerous character inside the White House. This is someone who regularly trades in conspiracy theories and who is going to be sometimes the first and last person that President Trump sees uh, when uh, he gets up and, and leaves the, the Oval Office at night. Uh, and it also speaks to this much broader effort that's happening to link far-right parties around the world. Uh, uh, David, from your reaction. 
Well, you asked the question, what's the case for it? Here's the case, that um, in any bureaucracy you have, in any foreign policy bureaucracy, you have people who are at some distance from the center of the organization who keep in touch with all kinds of undesirable people all over the planet. Um, the Austrian Freedom Party may well come to power. You need someone who knows what's going on there, just as you have conversations through intermediaries with Hamas and with the Iranians and other bad actors all over the planet. Yeah, they may come to power, but you've legitimized them before they come to power. You legitimize them after they come to power. But you also make sure that in a well-structured um, foreign policy operation, that those people don't come too close uh, to the center, partly because it's a reward, uh, partly because uh, you want to... Um, now, you want to handle de delicate situations with, with kid gloves. The problem is not that people in the Trump campaign talk to bad actors. People in every campaign have proxies who talk to bad actors all over the planet. Uh, the problem is that there does seem to be, and, and as the two previous, as, as the ambassador and as Joseph Rizzioni said, that these, the Trump campaign seems actually to be of like mind with mm -hmm. Russian foreign policy. Uh, what we are seeing here is a very systematic Russian attack attempt to smash NATO and the EU to pieces. Look, Russia has a GDP about the size of Italy. Um, on its own, it is not a very powerful actor, certainly not compared to a united democratic Western world. It can only be powerful by setting the parts of the democratic world at each other's throats. And there are parties inside the EU willing to do that, not because they're Nazis, but because they have various kinds of sinister agendas that are more modern than Nazism. And the Trump campaign seems to be either share those or not to understand the stakes. Uh, Ambassador McFall, uh, it, it leaves the question of uh, what powers exist outside of the Trump administration with it to counterbalance this, what kind of congressional oversight or, or, or congressional influence can be brought to bear in this situation? Well, I think all of the checks and balances of our system need to be at play, and, and by the way, I think they will be. Uh, I, I have confidence in that. Uh, remember, even the executive branch. Not everybody changes, but I remember my first day working at the White House. I walked in and met my new staff, and every single person the, the previous day had worked for George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. uh, those people will be there. Our diplomats will be there that understand this party. At the Pentagon, there are lots of people, including, as you just uh, pointed out, General Dunford, that has a very sober view of what Russia is doing. And the U.S. Congress, I think, needs to play a very important role in interrogating and, and examining every foreign policy move, including in the transition. And finally, just like what we're doing right here, uh, I think it's a very important time to educate uh, the American people and, by the way, maybe educate even the Trump people who may not understand the history of this party, who may not understand the linkages back to United Russia, the party in Moscow. Uh, by the way, the gentleman who signed that agreement from Moscow is on our sanctions list. Uh, and, and through that process, at least hope, hope that we don't do uh, as a country, as the administration doesn't do radically stupid things. I cannot disagree with this guy more, okay? Number one, he's talking about we have to hope that uh, Trump uh, doesn't uh, continue to go further in cementing relationships with these white supremacists, far uh, alternate right, far right people. We have to hope for that, really? And number two, and more importantly, this situation was caused by people's lack of belief in Trump when he said or didn't say the various things that people uh, were looking to him for. More importantly, anybody, and that includes the people in the Republican Party, that push back against Trump in any way, shape, manner, or form are already starting to get attacked by the Trump supporters and the bright uh, Bart white supremacist followings. I say that because there was a Republican House of Representatives member who uh, was on a panel and he was specifically asked about the House of Representatives relationship, future relationship with uh, Donald Trump. 
And he started off by saying that there were a lot of areas uh, that the House of Representatives did agree with Donald Trump and that they could work together in those areas. But there were other areas that uh, they may have agreed with where they wanted to end up, but there was a difference of opinion on how they could get there. That particular statement blew up on social media with all of the Trump Sieg Heil followers going after this guy and Breitbart came out after this guy as well. So there is going to be hell to pay as far as disagreeing with Donald Trump if you are a Republican. And I don't think the Republicans have the backbone in order to stand up and say and do the right things. Uh, Michael Flynn, at, at this point, is is on his own. He's not going to get support uh, from the Joint Chiefs or for for anything that's that's already in place institutionally. And and one wonders at some point is Donald Trump going to notice this? Is Donald Trump going to notice that no one agrees with Michael Flynn? Well, he certainly represents the one faction inside the incoming Trump administration, the sort of Islamophobic, uh, conspiracy-minded faction. There are others uh, uh, like this, frankly. The, the Representative Pompeo, who is named to be the director of, of the CIA, shares some of these views. That's not the views of General Mattis, this possibly Secretary of Defense, or of uh, Rex Tillerson, possibly the Secretary of State. So you will see this, this struggle going in. And look, nobody's against improving relations with Russia. The, it, General, General is absolutely right. Russia represents the greatest threat, the existential threat to the United States. They have 1,000 nuclear warheads ready to launch at the United States in a moment's notice. And by the way, we do too, which is one reason we should take these weapons off of, of a uh, hair trigger alert right now. So you have to improve relations with Russia. The question is, what's the deal? What's the balance? And David points out in an excellent article in The Atlantic that, that we some people are now afraid that the Trump a team is giving away the U.S. advantage, is agreeing to things to do with Russia without getting anything in return, is already showing all their cards. And that's the danger. Yes, improve relations with Russia, but get something in return for it. Uh, David, give us an example of how the U.S. Should, and the Trump administration should play those cards. Um, look, remember, Russia is poor, Russia is weak, Russia is under sanction. Um, the Trump administration is unpredictable and scary. It should look scarier. Uh, one thing you do is you do not make up your mind early to have a bad relationship with China. The old um, Nixon-Kissinger understanding was that uh, the United States is the power of the, those three great powers. The United States is the one with the most freedom of action. So act like it. Um, as, as Joe said, the tr Trump is, is, has already insulted the Chinese, meaning that he has reduced his own freedom of action. And the question is, is that ideological or do the Russians have something on him? That's what I said. I believe the Russians have something on him. And I did a video stating just that. And I think one of the things is a way we talk about this is if it's all very unfortunate and is if Donald Trump doesn't understand and if only he understood what his best interests really were. But you know, there are a lot of things to criticize about Donald Trump, but not knowing what's in his best interest has seldom been one of them. And so when you see him acting in a certain way, you have to assume he's got a reason to do it. And if the reason looks dark, that doesn't mean it's not true. <laughs> Ambassador McFall, uh, your reaction to that, the likelihood or the possibility uh, that the Russians through various means would, as David put it, have something on Donald Trump? Uh, I can't, I, I really, I mean, it's a hypothesis uh, that could be true. I don't know that to be a fact, but I do want to build on this conversation about means versus ends. And, and let me give you, I've actually negotiated with the Russians mm. uh, for several years when I was in the administration. And like Joe, uh, we weren't against uh, good relations, but we had objectives that we wanted to get done. Foreign policy objectives that we thought were good for the American people. Uh, we got a START treaty done. Uh, not a thousand, Joe, but we got it down to 1550 uh, <laughs> weapons pointed at each other through the new START treaty. We got sanctions on Iran. 
We got uh, a new distribution route to Afghanistan. We got Russia into the WTO. And the means to do that was engagement with then President Medvedev. Trump's got it backwards. He has made the objective of his foreign policy, at least so far, is getting along with Russia. And Putin's got a really clear idea, strategy for achieving that. Well, if you endorse what I do in Syria, I'll let us have a nice party in the Kremlin. If you lift sanctions, I'll say we get along better. If you endorse uh, our annexation of Crimea, we'll, we'll approve your, you know, your popular approval ratings here in Russia. In other words, he's got it exactly backwards. And so far, I don't know what he seeks in terms of the, the great deals mm -hmm. that he's promised mm -hmm. to do with Russia. That comes first, and then the means for achieving them, either through engagement or pressure, comes second. Joe Cernciani, David Frum, and Ambassador Michael McFall, thank you all for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Coming up, the extraordinary story of a woman. The New World Order. Donald Trump's New World Order. This guy is taking us for a ride. And I don't think we're going to like where that destination ends up.